Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Swipe Up, episode 234, the podcast where I share my unfiltered thoughts on the latest news and entertainment updates. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and every Thursday I'll be bringing you a fresh perspective on a variety of topics. In this episode, the three stories I'm talking about, the first story is fascism in Tennessee as the Tennessee House expels two of three Democrats over gun protest. The second story is a quote-unquote Pandora's box. Doctors warn of rising plant fungus infections in people after, quote, first-of-its-kind case. And the third story, to round out the desperation and despair trilogy of stories, uh, San Jose Police Union executive charged with attempted illegal importation of fentanyl analog. That's right. A police union leader has been charged with importing importing a fentanyl. Couldn't, couldn't make this shit up, people. Let's get into it, shall we, with our first story. Tennessee's House expels two or three Democrats over guns protest. I hope everybody has seen this. Obviously, if you're on TikTok, then you have seen this. Uh, if you watch the actual news or maybe you're on other social media platforms, it definitely took them a few days before they actually discussed this. They were very distracted with coverage and pundits talking about Trump as he nothing really happened as he is charged with a bunch of felonies and they film his plane for hours they film his car for hours where nothing happens meanwhile in Tennessee Republican lawmakers have expelled democratically elected politicians because they protested in their first amendment right this is this is 100% fascism and is what Republicans are doing left and right in this country. But this specifically is an example of you know it, of Demo of Republicans not liking Democrats and literally expelling them from government for no reason other than expressing their first amendment right against a, an epidemic that is taking place in this country. Tennessee Republicans have expelled two Democratic lawmakers from the state legislature for their role in a protest calling for more gun control in the aftermath of a deadly school shooting in Nashville. A third Democrat was narrowly spared by a one-vote margin. Out of the three, there were two black men and one white woman. I'm going to give you, in, in a place where Republicans are expelling democratically elected Democratic politicians because they don't like what they are protesting about, let me just guess the race, the melanin content of the person who narrowly stayed because I can tell you that they weren't black. Uh, the third Democrat narrowly spared the split vote. Uh, the split votes drew accusations of racism. Obviously, lawmakers oust reps Justin Jones and Justin Pearson, uh, who are both black, while Representative Gloria Johnson, who is white, was uh, survived the vote on her expulsion. Uh, Republican leadership denied that race was a factor which of course why would they why would a, a group of fascists ever need to tell the truth about anything when they have the ability to eliminate any opposition in politics to anything they want what is actually holding them accountable for telling the truth what exactly do they gain from openly admitting that yes they are openly racist as fuck why would they have to do that they wouldn't there's nothing that would compel them to do that so of course they would deny oh they deny no shit they denied it 
I think you, at some point, we need to stop bothering with the words that people are saying and just focus on their actions because the actions of these Republican politicians are that of fascism, of eliminating specifically the two Democrat black people and the one white lady almost got because of her political affiliation was almost expelled but clearly the racial connection that she has to the other white supremacists in the tennessee house of representatives was enough to keep her around banishment in a move uh, is a move the chamber has used only in a handful of times since the Civil War. Most state legislatures have the power to expel members, but it is uh, generally reserved for a punishment for lawmakers accused of serious misconduct, like sexual molestation, like fraud, like actually breaking laws is generally what people, not for standing up for their First Amendment right, not for standing up in protest with their constituents over what is uh, a blatant protection of gun lobbyists and gun manufacturers to maintain their profits despite these piles of dead bodies that continue to get created every day in this country because profits are far more valuable for gun manufacturers than any child's life is in this country. So, you know, because of that, because them exercising their First Amendment right, um, they were treated to a punishment that is generally reserved for politicians who literally break the law, who commit felonies, right? Not exercising an amended, uh, uh, um, the First Amendment right, not even the Second Amendment, the First Amendment. Before this delusional worship of guns, the right to free speech and protest and, and press was granted to the people and is now being taken away for the profits of gun manufacturers and for the, the NRA paychecks that these white supremacist politicians get to cash to, to fluff their bank accounts GOP leaders said Thursday actions were necessary to avoid setting a precedent that lawmakers' disruptions of House proceedings uh, through protests would be tolerated. Yet, apparently, there is a Republican politician at that same House who once urinated on somebody else's seat. I mean, you want to talk about decorum, and that person didn't get expelled. It's it's just it's just constant bullshit, just absolute and constant bullshit that these people pretend like they are making just decisions and that they are justified in their actions of blatant fascism. The two expelled lawmakers may not be gone for long as county commissions in their districts get to pick replacements to serve until a specific or till a special election can be scheduled and they could opt to choose Jones and Pearson which I hope they do uh, under the Tennessee Constitution lawmakers cannot expel for the same offense twice so if they are brought in back then they will have to find another reason another bullshit reason to do it President Joe Biden criticized the expulsion, calling them shocking, uh, undemocratic, and without precedent, right? That should be uh, a far more serious thing than just a criticism. That is like that is like a complete eradication of any kind of democracy. Imagine if a democratically elected uh, majority were to just expel... conservatives for like the plethora of things that they do 
imagine. But it doesn't happen. Especially Joe Biden. Joe Biden loves conservatives. He loves, he is conservative. The fact that our country is so far right. The, the, the delusion that Joe Biden is a left-leaning progressive in any form or fashion is ridiculous. The dude is mostly conservative. He loves conservatives. He loves conservatives. It is just, it's, we're living in an insane world. So, one instance of fascism. There's other ones going on in other states where there was one in Arizona where a conservative majority decided to impose made-up rules in order to require Democrats to have like some kind of super majority like s- signatures from Republicans to even introduce bill like it was basically this made up rule that c- made it impossible for democratic uh democratically elected democrat re- rep- representatives to present any kind of bill in in their uh in their state it, it is mind blowing and it's not surprising cuz that is actually exactly what they want to do right they don't care about laws. They don't care about rules. They want to bend and break and and ignore anything and everything that will keep them from gaining victory because they have nothing to offer. Let's take a quick break right now to talk about, are you a fan of original artwork and live events? Look no further than the Many Faces series by Ray Taylor and the weekly live stream over at youtube.com slash inspired disorder this ongoing series explores the endless possibilities of the human face through abstract ink paintings on paper capturing unique expressions of emotion mood tone and energy in just a few minimal features join me every thursday at 4 20 pacific time as i paint live follow the many faces series and discover the endless possibilities of the human face don't miss out on this opportunity to be part of the action and own a piece of original artwork by me ray taylor head to youtube.com slash inspired disorder every thursday to catch the live stream and visit inspireddisorder.com to browse and purchase the many faces artwork and now let's get back to the show Let's move on to the next story. <clears throat> uh, Pandora's box. Doctors warn of rising plant fungus infections in people after the first of its kind case. A man in India was the first human known to be infected by a fungus called uh, Candrostrium uh, purpureum, uh, which is usually responsible for causing silver leaf disease in plants. For anybody that's watched the show, The Last of Us, it is, I mean, you could call it a zombie show, but the premise is that due to global climate change, the rise of temperatures, uh, fungus that cannot uh, exist inside humans because the temperature, the internal temperature of humans is not, uh, does not sustain life in, for fungus. Fungus cannot live in our internal body temperatures. But because of the rise of temperature, funguses evolved to survive in higher temperatures, thus allowing fungus to infect humans, which is the premise of The Last of Us, which is something that we see fungus do in insects that aren't warm-blooded creatures. And this story could be the tip of the iceberg as far as what we can look forward to as far as new types of infections if funguses are going to start having the ability to exist inside humans this could be a very bad thing uh the patient a plant mycologist made a full recovery and did not experience any reoccurrence of the infection after two years of follow-up observations so this was actually a while ago uh not that long ago i guess um This case study shows the risk that fungal pathogens pose to humans, particularly 
with the contribution of human activities such as climate change and rampant urbanization that have opened Pandora's box for newer fungal diseases. Fungal pathogens infect about 150 million people each year, resulting in 1.7 million deaths. Fungi are the source of fictional diseases depicted in the apocalyptic game The Last of Us, as I said. Uh, and also a real-life scourge. Uh, only a small fraction of the millions of fungal species can infect animals and humans given their high body temperatures and sophisticated immune systems. Uh, prolonged exposure and genetic susceptibilities could be the possible reason for infection in the patient. Climate change is accelerating the spread of infectious disease in general, including fungal pathogens by allowing microbes to adopt or sorry, adapt to higher temperatures, expand their range, and interact with new hosts. Yay! Um, everybody, like, conservatives are so worried about refugees from other countries. Anybody that has an excess of melanin in their, in their skin and not from uh, the United States, they are considered to be the biggest threat to the United States. However, the real refugees you need to be worried are the uh, the viral and fungal refugees that are spreading and actually uh, causing a lot of death. I don't know if anybody's heard of the pandemic that we just had. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are in denial that millions of people are dead from it. But, you know, it, it would be a, an insane cover up to kind of convince a whole scientific and medical community that uh, a pandemic happened uh without without us knowing but anyway uh fungi can be more dangerous than viruses or bacteria as they do not require host to host contact to establish infection and can cause complete host extinction cross kingdom human pathogens have important implications for the emergence of infectious disease and more research is needed to understand the nature of the infections and strategies to mitigate their spread. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed uh, The Last of Us. I thought it was a great show. Uh, not the premise of it. The thinking of that premise becoming a reality isn't great. Um, but, I mean, with so many different things that are potentially going to be responsible for the eradication of humans on this planet... Uh, I, I just hope I'm at ground zero. I don't want to, I don't, I don't really care to try and survive that and be one of the long lasting survivors of a, uh, uh, apocalyptic event. I'm, I'm good to go for the forever sleep, uh, if you know what I mean. So anyway, uh, kind of crazy, not surprising. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just uh, the new reality we're living in as if like this, like, even if that wasn't a threat, then you have like, there's just so many things in this world that are like, especially in this country, United States, where it's like, most people can't even afford to exist. The, it's, a, it's so amazing how many people argue about somebody having the ability to earn a living wage. Uh, as if that's some kind of gift that you should be able to survive by working a job. Um, and then on top of that, you have like increased food prices with corporate greed. You have uh, the inability to purchase a home. Home prices are ridiculous and mostly owned by large corporations. Like the any kind of like the the life that you can have these days, especially in America, is is laughable. And then you think about the gun violence that exists and how desperate people are to protect the, the profits of gun manufacturers. You think about the, the environmental tragedies that are happening by all these companies that are deregulating everything and, and doing everything to profit, maximize profits and absolutely decimate poison, like 
water is not drinkable in like so many places in a first world like we are slowly slipping into and maybe not slow is not the right term but we are definitely regressing into a, a nation that at some point will not be able to be referred to as a as a uh as a uh what is it called a um like a developed nation a first world right we are slipping into more of a third world where things are falling down our water is we struggle for drinking water there's only a few kings that exist and everybody else is kind of killing themselves it is it is deteriorating into a, a kind of a horrible place to live and it's amazing how many people are celebrating and actively pushing for that that uh degradation let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about attention, attention. All, all ray, ray taylor, taylor show, show fans. fans we're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show our high quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show. But let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to our last story. San Jose Police Union Executive charged with attempted illegal importation of fentanyl analog. Not only do the cops murder people, harass people, not only are they basically the most dangerous criminal organization in this country, right? domestic terrorism on a level that no other domestic terrorist group could really bat an eye at like they are far and away the leaders of these crimes against people that actually pay for their salaries but you know they're also like the leaders in in like theft from citizens more so than actual people who burgle citizens and now we have a somebody high up in a police union uh involved in drug trafficking in a, a specific type of drug that the police have a very specific type of uh, like un irrational fear towards uh, where they think that being in proximity or touching that product can somehow cause them to overdose uh, despite the fact that when they do overdose they don't actually show signs of ever like they test negative for ever consuming the product their symptoms that they they suffer from this overdose aren't actually the symptoms somebody who overdoses from fentanyl would have like it doesn't match up other the only thing it really matches up and signifies is that they have like a mass psychosis where their brain is telling them that they're having a a an overdose situation when it's in many ways impossible for them to have absorbed enough of it unless they took it unless they ingested it you can't just put your hand on something right the 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 versions of fentanyl that are in patches are specifically formulated for your skin to absorb them and even then it's such a horrible way to ingest the substance that like it it would be even harder to you'd have to like bathe in fentanyl patches in order to overdose like it is it is one of the worst ways to ingest the the uh drug fentanyl for for actual pain relief right and but these cops like they just they get in proximity of fentanyl and they 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 literally feel like they're having an overdose despite their symptoms not being overdose symptoms right they the they they don't match up with what people are affected with actual fentanyl overdoses have but because we live in a country that is so blindly like 
in support of this or these organizations of people who like violate human rights on a constant basis and constantly trying to fund them and tr constantly like acting like they are in some ways a hero uh allow them to get away with this mass psychosis kind of mentality but this woman, Joanna Marin Segovia, the executive director of the San Jose Police, and this is from the Department of Justice, right? I'm not reading this off of a news site. This is like, right, this is somebody in the government actually getting busted for doing this drug trafficking. And it's not a isolated incident either. So Joanna Marin Segovia, the executive director of the San Jose Police Office uh, Association, has been charged with attempted illegal importation of controlled substance. The charges are in connection with a scheme to bring synthetic opioids into the United States and distribute them throughout the country. Segovia uses her personal off her personal and office computers to order thousands of opioids and other pills to her home and agreed to distribute the drugs elsewhere in the United States. She, has, she was apprehended as part of an ongoing Homeland Security investigation into a network that was shipping controlled substances into San Francisco Bay from abroad. Between October 2015 and January 2023, eight years, Segovia had at least 61 shipments mailed to her home originating from countries including Hong Kong, Hungary, India, and Singapore. Segovia uses encrypted WhatsApp communications to plan logistics for receiving and sending pill shipments, uh, exchanging hundreds of messages with someone using a phone with an Indian uh, India country code. Uh, she uses her office in San Jose Police Officers Association to distribute controlled substances such as sending packages to a woman in North Carolina. Segovia continued to order controlled substances even after being interviewed by federal investigators on February 2023. That's how like comfortable c police officers are with breaking the law that even though they are interviewed and being investigated, I mean, they you think about police officers who literally murder people on camera like we see them tackle and shoot an innocent person in the back of the head like we see how bullshit their claims are of people their 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 lies about people being armed their lies about uh somebody being aggressive when it's clear in almost every single situation the police are the ones that initiate and escalate situations right and they get away with it. Unless it becomes global protest news, they will face charges and be convicted. But the majority of the time, they get unemployed at one department and go work for another department. There is little to no actual punishment that takes place. And it's clear that that is a comfort they all use, especially because of the police unions. And this woman a part of the police union, knowing how strong that union is, allowing people, allowing their members to literally get away with murder because of their, uh, their exec, their, uh, the, the exemption, the, uh, oh, my, I'm sick. My brain is done, but their qualified immunity. They can get away with it. So Segovia continued to order controlled substances even after being interviewed by a federal investigation in February 2023. Uh, in March 13, 2023, federal agents seized a parcel in Kentucky containing fe uh, uh, viral fentanyl addressed to Segovia. Um, <clears throat> if convicted, Sco Segovia faces a maximum uh, statutory sentence of 20 years. Uh, supervised release and find up to a quarter million dollars. I'm glad she got caught. Uh, it's not surprising that uh, the police would be involved in, I mean, you know, the history of the crack epidemics and how the government was involved with those things and uh, to fund military th wars and 
and to uh, incarcerate a, a race of people that have been systematically oppressed their entire existence in this country. Um, you know, it's it's nice to see that somebody got busted. And it's like, I would imagine the only reason she got busted is because she is so calf. She's been doing it forever. She probably did not care. She's using her her business and personal computer. She's like doing very little to protect herself. That's how comfortable this woman was with what she was doing. She probably, there's probably hundreds of people involved with this business that is not her that are probably going to be free from any kind of prosecution everything's going to be dumped on her as if she was a one-man army of some sorts as if like nobody knew that she was doing this thing that she was running drugs through the the police union for eight years oh we had 61 shipments and that's what they know of right it's ridiculous. <clears throat> I hope she gets the maximum. I hope that I hope she rats out all of the people that help her to get, you know, I'm sure that's what will happen. She'll get a shortened sentence if she survives. Police are good at killing people, especially people that speak out against police. Uh, one of their own. They love to silence their own people. So. Anyway, those are the stories. These are my sources. Uh, APnews.com, Vice.com, and Justice.gov. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Swipe Up. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and insights on the latest news and entertainment updates. Please join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or if you're watching this over on YouTube. I'll see you next Thursday for more unfiltered opinions and fresh perspectives. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.